Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm looking at something called Rogue System. And, well, you can tell by the system's loading screen here that this is very, very, very early access. Uh, I mean, this is a, a project which I've been following for a couple of years now. It's by a single guy, essentially, uh, Michael Giuliano. It's uh, Digits Crossed Interactive, and the whole concept is best described as... DCS spaceship, right? Digital combat simulators, uh, that, that if you know that series of games, they have the, the A-10 Warthog and they have three million switches to switch on that. And uh, it's very nice to look at these amazingly designed cockpits in Star Citizen, for example. But right now, none of those switches work. And I don't think the design team has any interest in making them work. And quite rightfully, there's so much more interesting gameplay for, you know, the average fan. This is for a hardcore sim fan who wants a spaceship game where every single switch in the cockpit works and has meaningful interaction. They're not just simulating the way the spacecraft flies according to the laws of physics, you're simulating the way the spacecraft behaves internally, the way the power flows down the electrical buses, the way the fuel flows through the, through the pipes, the way the heat dissipates through the radiators. I mean, this is, you know, this is a, a grand concept and it's being implemented by one guy. And I'm just going to show you the launch procedure, which is mostly flicking switches to make things warm up. And well, okay, so we're inside it and there's a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. I'm just going to show you the quick interior of the spaceship. Unfortunately, the lights are kind of low right now because we are on uh, emergency power. This here apparently leads to the engine bay or something, and this is how you would enable the self-destruct system with very alien-style, you know, levers and stuff to pull. There's a lot of tactile things going on. Anyway, uh, the lighting is rather dim. We're in emergency mode, so we need to get to the cockpit to open it. So it's a first-person view at this point. I'm just going to move myself into the cockpit. Stand here to the side of the seat. There is the seat there. There's the control panels. And we can put the seat back into stored position. And once that's come down, I can enter the pilot seat and start everything running. Uh, I could disable the cabin lighting, bring up the engineering or the instrumentation lights, set the seat into the correct location. And now I need to go to the core ship systems manager to start validating things. So turn on a battery uh, and attach it to the power bus. Oh, and things start to really come online. Look, we get, ooh, warning lights everywhere. Oh no, my spaceship's exploding. Actually, no, of course there's warning lights. They're warning me that I don't have any power anywhere. So I just turn them off. Uh, so, but right now we're hooked into the space station so I can enable the maintenance power. So that's me hooked into the space station now and so I can check uh, power on the buses and things like this. There, look, we have available power loading up here. Everything's green. That's great. And I now see that I no longer have SysBus1 overloaded. So that's great. So now on to SysBus2, I think, right? So I can say, oh, well, actually, let's start battery one recharging. Now we can switch to System Bus 2, which has a couple of warning lights on it. Notice these. Well, turn these on, set those to recharge, and uh, enable the secondary bus. And, oh, look, now the bus is overloaded, right? So the bus is available, but it's overloaded. So what I think I need to do is uh, the maintenance power is only feeding the, the primary bus. Now if I flick this over, It'll feed both of the buses, and now, um, yes, there, the overload light has gone out. Excellent. So now I have a fusion reactor here, right? Low energy nuclear reactor. It will handle my primary power needs, but in the meantime, we need to get our fuel cells ready for use. So we have fuel cell one, fuel cell two, enable these and check that the core temperature is starting to rise. I should have done that in core one, but I'm flicking through this quickly. There, see, core one is happening. Now, uh, the 
temperature management system needs to be primed, and that needs you need to deal with the coolant flow around everything. So they're warning you to not run the pumps without coolant in the system, so I gotta pre-pressurize that and apply power to the pump. I don't want to toggle it twice because that will make it happen too fast. There's a backup, or there's two coolant loops. Make sure those are set up. And you can see the coolant levels here in this display. Note that with both pubs enabled, uh, pumps enabled, you also have the enable all. Uh, it'll enable all, they are right. And the TMS lights are now all extinguished, which is a good sign. Now that ship's enabled, I gotta talk to the traffic control, which means powering up the communication system and hitting tab to say, Hey, space traffic control, I'm gonna check in. Control, this is 339460, checking in. The comms menu will close. When they reply, open the comms menu and confirm. 349460, this is control, we have you checked in. Over. Space traffic control. Uh, request departure clearance. This is 349460 requesting departure clearance. So that, you know, this is of course half of what flight sims are, right? Is talking to the tower, right? <laughs> That's the one thing I do not know anything about. I, I know the theories of flying planes and I know where a lot of controls are. I would not know how to talk to a tower or anything or like obey rules. Okay. So we have all this fancy stuff. So I need to enable the MES, which is something important. But LENR is the low energy nuclear reactor. Also, it's basically a cold fusion reactor, but it, by cold it means not billions of degrees. Okay, EM field level is beginning to rise. That's great. And now I can start preheating the core, so the core temperature is starting to come up, but it'll take a while to get up to operating temperature. So we're now going to start sending fuel to the core, so I'm just going to enable this to enable all the fuel tank pumps. When enable all is turned on, I'm going to switch to two to make sure that we have fuel in both all, in all of them. Great. And on the LENR, we're going to in select one of the tanks. So we've selected tank two. Fine. Uh, on the FCM panel, a uh, fuel cell manager. We're going to make sure these things are using their fuel, and of course, fuel cell 1 and 2, now both ready. During an emergency, I just opened the cutoff valve, which I presume is shutoff valve here. Uh, there's a few things that are inconsistent, but that's okay, it's entirely, it's a very early access game. Caution, I can damage the fuel cells by allowing them to flow when the core temps are too low. The core temperature may not still be up to everything, so now we're going to uh, do some controls here. This is my visual management system. So uh, displays VMS. It's nothing to do with the operating operating system. I'm going to power up my system here. And if I zoom out, I can see all these screens coming online. You see, this is a realistic space sim. You do not want to have a cockpit with glass that you can shoot lasers through. So all these are screens that are rendering a view from the outside. It's basically an immersive cockpit with screens all around you. The best Omnimax theatre that money can buy and put on a spaceship. So that's the space station just over my shoulder there. So uh, I can also set uh, docking mode on my heads-up display. On the top row of page buttons, select navigation. Navigation. So for navigation, navigation is disabled, so we need to power up the navigation computer, bring it online. There we can see planets and stuff. Uh, of course, this is they're warning you that this is still being uh, developed, so this doesn't work. Over at the comms menu, we have all of this stuff here. So comms channels and everything you have to manage yourself, right? So like channel one is the system channels, channel two is your own private channel, channel three uh, you should you can set to whatever. So I'm going to select channel three and then it tells me to set it to frequency 999, 999, 999, set. Bingo, numbers in there. You see? 
You know, if I want to change just one field, I can do that click, 3333, three, three, set. Look, it's all 333. Three, three. And I could set my localizer beacon to use that frequency as well. Anyway, I'm leaving the, the HMD with the comms page up. If you had the HMD, press, okay, never mind. It's just telling me to make sure I have the keyboard in the correct mode. No, I should set the seat to recline properly for flight. There, laying back so I can really appreciate the pimp seats in this thing. Ah, now the core should finally be up to temperature. So let's uh, tell, well, we need to initiate the reaction, but we need to tell the spaceport that we're ready. So space traffic control, we are ready for LENR in ignition. And when they grant permission, I'm going to start powering things up. Come on, I'm waiting here. Make sure there's nobody standing too but near too nearby. Power initialize fuel and start preheating the core, and we're now heating everything up. So now the main electrical system bus. We're gonna start applying power to that, and the available power indicator is rising. So that's where the real power is coming from. Great, and now we have that. We no longer need maintenance power. And so bus one and two, we're just going to check that they have power. We're all good. Now I'm not allowed to use the MTS plasma thrusters within the station or near the station. So we're going to have to set up the maneuvering thrusters in cool mode. This is like slow maneuvering. So I need to power up my maneuvering thruster system, select the fuel source, open the cool fuel cutoff valve and power up the injector and enable all my RCS nozzles. So that should be sufficient for me to be able to depart. In practice the manual startup procedure only takes a few minutes. Okay, so now we're ready to let the space traffic control know. Uh, so here we are ready for departure. So I'm going to zoom in here because they're going to give me some important frequencies. This is control, clearance granted. Over. So again, it's all frequency management here. Private frequency is 45.0.0. .0. Maintenance power disabled, stand by for departure frequencies. Roger, understood. Okay, so it'll be 45.23, 45.23, and I'm gonna set that on channel three. There we go. And I may need, uh, there's another panel, channel need, 42202, set, there we go. Now the umbilicals are being disconnected and I can see some of this in external view. See that? Stand by for release. I'm ready for release. There we go. So now. I'm floating free, and I have to actually have some control now, so I can use my thrusters, you see them there firing? Use that to move away a little faster. There we go. Now, I've got my flight controls running, and the interior, I should be able to start doing some stuff here. Now I'm far enough away that I think I can deploy my temperature management radiators, right? So let's deploy both of these and look in the exterior view. Yes, temperature management is a really important thing. When you're dealing with lasers that are capable of, you know, burning their way through steel, then uh, you really need to make sure that you have sufficient cooling to get rid of all that waste heat. Like I'm reversing away from the station. Now I think I can enable my autopilot and tell it to hold yaw pitch and roll but maybe I've missed something here I'll just do that for now I might be missing some reference button here I can't remember exactly how to do that yeah maybe that's it there we go and turn this way so I'm floating away from the station once I reach like 200 meters they will let me fire up the uh, the special system. So I can actually still use this to reverse, go even faster. 
once we're out here, we will be free to navigate. I'll just turn away. I am now clear of S STC limiting. I should prepare to ignite the MTS. Have a good flight. Okay. So, I'm going to enable my super thing and my helicon coupler. And that will enable kind of hot stuff, but not super hot stuff. I'm going to cancel my rotation now. Okay. And, and now the containment field is online. I just got to hold the igniter as my plasma comes online. There we go. So this will give me some power here, right? So if I switch to exterior view, oh, then you can see these are still pretty cold, actually. Cold plasma production uses just as much propellant as superheated plasma, and is so is less fuel efficient. So actually, I should switch to booster enable. Enable my ICH coupler, and now my exhaust should be able to reach 91,000. And that's that. I'm going to continue this for a second. Now, wait a second. How do I get my uh, stuff online here? Is this where I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to enable some thing or other. Nozzles are enabled. Uh, cold gas override is enabled. That's my problem, right? So now, if I throttle up, yeah, full on plasma drive. And that, notice the speed that I took off away from the station, right? Nice, so I should be able to turn this thing around. And that now, be, now that we're using the plasma drive, we have a lot more power, so it's a lot more, it turns a lot more quickly. So I'm just gonna turn back towards the station. And notice that we're now receding away from it a lot faster. Now I could set, the, I could try docking with the station if I wanted, but I, that, I've already done, so I'm not going to go through the full docking procedure. But I will actually fly back towards it. So yes, uh, Rogue System is currently like closed alpha for people that are hardcore and you know care and have been backing it. It, it ran a Kickstarter a while back. It was almost sort of contemporaneous with uh, Elite Dangerous and, uh, and uh, of course, Star Citizen. But it never never managed to hit its goals. So I'm only seeing this now after a couple of years of testing. There we go. We've kind of... Uh, we're now flying past it again. I'm going to use the lighter weight thruster so I don't accelerate quite so fast. So yeah, uh, eventually the game will hopefully add combat missions. There is a some test mission where you can fly around and shoot at dumb targets. Uh, it's just enough to show you where the guns are. In fact, I think this is probably armed here. If I look here, I can enable my weapons. We get one set of weapons. Enable all, arm all, weapon one and two. I wonder if the weapons fire. Oh yeah, we get guns here. We could try killing this station. That will really annoy the space traffic control people though, right? So now we are in range of the station. We are bumbling it with our totally terrible and wimpy weapons. Yeah, yeah, you know, you can shoot things with them if you like. There's of course a million things to adjust, like you can disable the overheat protection, you can adjust the, uh, you can of course adjust the convergence. It's, it's kind of, uh, there's a lot of things to do in here in theory, and the real challenge is of course to make it into a cohesive game. And I will definitely be following its ongoing development with great interest. But until the next time, I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.